This episode of the Kill Innovations podcast is brought to you by listeners like you. You can become a supporter by visiting shop.philmckinney.com. Your support helps defray the cost to produce, host, and stream the show. As always, any profits are donated to charities such as hackingautism.org. I'm Phil McKinney, and this is the Kill Innovations Podcast, a show about ideas, creativity, and innovation. A few years back, I was invited to participate in a meeting with leaders from the U.S. Department of Education. Others in attendance at the meeting included university presidents, representatives from the teachers' unions, and a handful of others. All told, there was about 20 people in the room. The objective of the meeting was to identify ways to, quote, radically innovate the K-12 education system in the U.S. Talk about an ambitious goal. The metric that the organizers were using as proof, or you could say incentive or rationale, that there was a crisis was that the U.S. students came out on the rankings of the standardized test scores when compared against students from other countries. Just a quick side note. Since 1965, when the first of such tests were administered, the U.S. has never ranked higher than in the middle of the pack of all countries. When compared to GDP growth, the tests are not predictive of the future. When I was asked about my view on the issue, I shared that I'm not an expert on education or in curriculum development. I view myself as a purchaser of the output from the education system. I hire scientists, engineers, strategists, technicians, a highly skilled workforce to do the work we do. I then told the attendees in the meeting that as a purchaser, I didn't want what the education system was producing. I need organizations staffed by highly innovative individuals who will have the skills to solve problems we don't even know exist using technologies that haven't even been invented yet. From my perspective, the focus on test scores results in a system that generates the world's greatest test takers where success is defined by memorization of facts and formulas. Graduates that memorize yesterday's answers using yesterday's technologies will not be the workforce for tomorrow's innovation economy. Let me pause here for a second. While I'm talking about the U.S. and my work with the government here, the same can be said in most countries around the world. So don't stick your head in the sand thinking this is just a U.S. issue. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm blaming educators. The ultimate responsibility falls on us U.S. parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles for the education and training of our next generation. So what skills should we ensure our kids have to be competitive in the future innovation economy? In a recent study of U.S. and China parents, we can gain some insights in the priorities they have for their kids. What I found most interesting in the survey was the distinct difference between the two groups of parents. More than half of U.S. parents identified math and computer science as the number one skill their kids need to succeed in the future innovation economy, while the number one skill China parents ranked was creative approaches to problem solving. So, what do I think are the skills needed for the future success in the innovation economy? Here are three. Number one is critical thinking. Our kids need to be taught how to think rather than how to memorize. It's not about finding the one right answer for a test, but instead the ability to search out a range of possible solutions to a challenge or an opportunity, and then learning how to prototype possible answers. Critical thinking and problem-solving skills should not be standalone subjects, but instead taught across all subjects. For example, thinking through the range of options a given historical figure faced, and then determining what would have been the alternative outcomes. Did that person make the right decision? Second skill would be entrepreneurial. It's no longer about having deep expertise in a given area, but to also have the broad understanding of how a given idea is transformed into a successful innovation. Understanding the structures, steps, and culture of teamwork is a fundamental skill that everyone needs to have. And third would be creative storytelling. Since the currency of the future will be ideas, an individual's ability to present their ideas so that others see the value in it will be critical. Verbal and written storytelling skills is a rare find today, 
and one that determines how fast and how far someone's career will advance. Government should not hide behind things such as Common Core or No Child Left Behind facade. None of these address the real issues. While we as a society need to change the educational system to ensure we are producing the best employees possible, it's the parents that can have the most positive and immediate impact. I can't emphasize this enough. It's not too late. Don't wait for the school system to change. That will take decades. If we don't, what jobs will our children be equipped to have when the innovation economy takes over? If you're a supporter of the podcast, thank you. It's your support that helps keep the podcast going. If you're interested in becoming a supporter, visit shop.philmckinney.com. If you enjoyed today's show, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, and you can find all the links and resources from this episode, along with every other episode going back to 2005, over at philmckinney.com. Just click on podcast. I would love to hear your feedback on anything at all, such as the new format for the show, on topics, or questions you would like for me to answer, or even guests you would like for me to interview. Ping me on Twitter at Phil McKinney, all one word, or you can catch me on Facebook and LinkedIn. You can find the links to all the social media places I hang out on philmckinney.com. As always, thanks for listening.